Should you register your drone as a hobbyist drone or as a commercial drone? Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here, remotepilot101.com, and that's a question we get asked often in our live chat, and our support, on the phone, whatever it may be here at remotepilot101.com. And it's a question that needs a great response, and here's really the differences. Because we're often asked, Jason, I'm just a, a realtor, I want to do some stuff here, can I just be a hobbyist? The answer is no. Let me explain, let me take a step back here. What can a hobbyist do that a commercial can't do and commercial do that a hobbyist can't do because they both have their pros and cons and this will be changing here soon, I imagine. Did you know a hobbyist can operate at night but you can't if you're registered commercially? It's interesting. But did you know a hobbyist can't operate for compensation or higher? That's you have to be commercial. Did you know to register commercial, you have to be uh, a Part 107 provider to exercise that commercial right? Now, you can register your drone commercial before you've passed your Part 107 test, but to exercise those privileges, you're going to need to be Part 107 certified. That's where a course like ours, remotepilot101.com, comes in handy. Did you know as a hobbyist, you have to stay five nautical miles away from airports? And that includes helipads, private airports, it doesn't matter. That's where the FAA Before You Fly app comes in handy. But as a commercial operator, you just need to know airspace and you can actually operate at those airports. We do it all the time because we have a full manned aircraft business. We use unmanned and manned aircraft in our videos. So it's fascinating the differences here. But let me break down the verbiage here because we're often asked, like I said, hey, I'm a realtor. Uh, I just want to take some photos here. You know, I'm not really being paid for it, but you're using it as the FAA deems in furtherance of your business. If you're going to use a small unmanned aircraft system, a drone, for the furtherance of your business, you need to be a commercial operator. You need to register it commercially. You need to be Part 107 certified yourself. And let's take a step back from that. You want to take your photos, you want to sell them on iStock Photo. That's a commercial operation. You are a uh, a car dealership and you just want to do a flyby of all the cars, or you want to get an aerial photo of the car to then go list it online. That's furthering your business. You're using that drone to get a photo to sell something. The real estate example is exactly the same. Are you using it to further your business? Let me give you a real mind bender here now. And the FAA is going to make an example of these people uh, because you're probably going, man, I've seen this person break the rules. I know they're breaking the rules. The FAA is going to make an example. Let me run this idea by you. Someone takes a drone video, uploads it to YouTube, and has YouTube monetization over it, meaning ads run before, this skip this ad or ads run, you know, in the video. They're being compensated for that drone video because they're running ads. Yes, it's YouTube monetization, but they're running ads over that video that they were flying a drone in. Do you see where I'm going with this? If it's in the furtherance of your business, if you're being directly compensated or hired or ads are running over YouTube monetization, the FAA is going to be cracking down on this. They have got a lot on their plate right now, but as they continue to hire more, as new budgets get released and they can do that and be able to enforce these rules, they're going to make some examples. We've already seen some hefty fines. I saw one fine, it was $2 million for an airspace violation. They dropped it down to 200,000, which is very kind of them, I imagine. But that company paid that $200,000 fine for flying, I believe, in Chicago's Class Bravo airspace. They're going to start making examples. We need to check all our boxes, make sure we're doing everything to the fullest extent of the law. If you wanna use it for the furtherance of your business, you need to be Part 107 certified. So register it commercially. I know the next question is, Jason, I want to register both. What if I, I only use this, man, only on Saturdays am I doing commercial operations. The rest of the time I'm just flying around with the family for fun in the yard. Well, you, right now as it stands, you can't register both, hobbyist and commercial. Now, the best course of action is if you're going to use it even once for commercial, register commercial. You can fly it right? But you're still held to those commercial standards. It's a commercial registered drone, so you can't go operate at night. You can't just say, this Inspire is registered commercially, but right now I'm going to operate as a hobbyist and I'm going to fly at night. Well, that's the night you have a flyaway and you go and you throw it through grandma's screen porch and she finds it and calls the police who look up the registration number and say, this happened at night. This is a commercial registered drone. You are operating at night. It's pretty easy to make an example of you in that case, right? But I was operating as a hobbyist, but it's registered commercially. 
So you want to register it commercially because you're going to use it once commercially? Well, you have to, but you're still going to have to adhere to those commercial rules. You're still going to be 107 certified. And that's where a course like remotepilot101.com comes in handy. $150, the course is yours for life. Nearly 9,000 test pass, 60% of the market. If you talk to you know, people out there on Facebook, on these forums, you're going to run into a lot of people who have used our course because we have market share in the 107 test prep. You're going to see a lot of great reviews because we've only had out of those 9,000, seven failures. You know what? I'll pay for you if you fail your test. I will give you the 150 bucks that it costs to take that test back to you. It's that simple. Crazy guarantee, crazy success rate, remotepilot101.com, $150, the course is yours for life. Go check it out and I'll see you guys later. See ya. You've seen online that the Part 107 knowledge test isn't easy. It's not something you can go in alone. Let us be your guide. Let our 57 full 4K training videos really hold your hand and take you through the course step by step to better understand complex topics like airspace, charts, METARs and TAFs and aviation weather. You're able to test on and see the actual FAA Part 107 questions. And lastly, we're gonna help you submit your application to the FAA. Visit remotepilot101.com to learn more.